This video is an introduction to hole punching problems on the DAT-PAT. We're starting our hole punching video series here by going through the basic rules of hole punching problems and discussing how they work, as well as covering the basic approach to solving a hole punching problem. Hole punching is the fourth type of problem to appear on the PAT. Just like cube counting and angle ranking, you really wanna hone your hole punching skills so you have more time for trickier problems that require a lot more time and brain power. First, let's go over the basic rules of hole punching problems. During a hole punching problem, you're given a paper folding sequence. It will show you one or more sequential folds in a square piece of paper, followed by a hole punch. To answer these correctly, you have to pick the pattern of holes that would result if you then unfolded this paper. So for this one, if you track the hole during the unfolding, you'd see that it reflects here, then here, then here. And you end up with this. And this matches the pattern shown in choice C. Let's discuss some additional rules and clarifications. Note that this dotted line lets you keep track of the position of the original unfolded paper. In all cases, the paper will remain within the edges of this square. The paper is never flipped over and it's never rotated. It's always just folded along neat creases. In any of the steps, the paper can be folded horizontally like this. It can be folded diagonally like this, or it can be folded vertically. It can be folded in the same direction or it can be folded back on itself. It can also be folded so that the top layers of the paper go past the edges of the paper underneath. Notice that this top layer now goes beyond the layer underneath it. In some problems, the top layer of the paper may also be peeled back. If you see something like this, then it means that the top layer has been folded back over to here, creating a crease in the middle. This would leave more layers on this side than on this side, but we'll get into more detail on these more complicated folds in a later video. Now, of course, these folding steps are always shown in order, consecutively, and the very last step will just be the hole punch itself without any additional folding. And the answer options always show the hole pattern such that the black circles indicate where the holes ended up after the unfolding. These problems can have one or more steps all the way up to four folding steps before the hole punch. In addition, while they also have just one hole punch at the end, they could end in two or more hole punches. These problems can also include half hole punches, where there's a hole punched right on the edge or the crease of a fold so that it only punches half a hole. And we'll also talk about these in more detail in a later video that's part of our PAT course. So that's kind of the basics of how the problems work, but let's talk briefly about how individual holes are kind of reflected or multiplied throughout the process of a hole punching problem. Generally, when you fold this piece of paper, you end up with multiple layers of paper in certain areas. This map shows how different layers of paper end up in different areas. We always include these maps in our explanations to help you out. The reason you can end up with multiple holes from a single hole punch is of course because that hole punch is going through multiple layers of paper. In fact, however many layers of paper it goes through, that will be how many holes you end up having at the end. Though we don't really recommend this being your main strategy for analyzing hole punching problems, but it's a really important fact to keep in mind that can help you eliminate answer choices on trickier problems. What we do recommend as your main strategy is to just follow the holes through each step as the paper unfolds. Of course, a hole is only going to be replicated if it's within a region that is unfolding. So for a fold like this, where we have these two paper folds, a quarter of the paper folded over vertically twice, like this, then two hole punches, we can see that this hole is not going to be replicated as the paper unfolds because it's only going through this one layer of paper. But this hole will be replicated over twice because it's going through multiple layers. First, it'll be reflected across this crease. Then it will be reflected again across this crease. And you'll end up with four holes at the end. And notice that this does add up to the total number of layers that the holes were punched through. 
it's important to notice that holes are always reflected over the axis of a fold. This makes them easier to track because the reflections are always symmetrical. And holes always end up the same distance from that axis on both sides. At first, I found it really difficult to figure out where a hole was going to end up, especially with some of these really funky diagonal folds. But once I learned to take things step by step and focus on one unfolding step and its axis at a time, hole punching problems became so much easier. To better understand where holes will end up, it's really important to get familiar with the hole punching grid. This grid makes it easier because we know that our hole punches will always line up with one of these circles. So holes, no matter where they're folded from, will end up in one of these pre-established positions. This makes it a lot easier to track holes. For instance, say you have this vertical fold. This hole then gets punched here on the far right of the grid. That means that when you're unfolding it, you'll end up with another hole on the far left. And notice that both of these holes line up with the grid. And the same goes for this horizontal fold. This hole must be punched here in one of these four established grid positions. And that means that when you're unfolding it, you'll end up with another hole below it across the fold. Again, with both holes lining up with the grid. And even in diagonal folds. These holes are punched here in the two center positions of the grid along this top edge. This means that when you unfold it, you'll end up with two additional holes in the two middle positions in this far right column with all four holes lining up with the grid. You can also have folds like this that involve about three quarters of the paper. This unfolding, for instance, would move this hole from the second column to the last column. Likewise, a fold like this would result in this hole moving from up here to down here. Again, symmetrically across the axis of the fold and always according to this grid. Half holes, meanwhile, will occur on the axis of a paper fold, and unfolding the paper will simply open the holes up. Notice that these half holes will always occur when a paper fold sits across a hole location on the grid. This could be from a weird little 1 8 fold like this, or an off fold like this. or it can also happen on a diagonal axis. In any case, hole punching problems always work so that the holes end up on the hole punching grid with folds positioned properly to allow for this. For instance, for a problem like this, the first unfold would put the hole here on the grid on the opposite side of the fold axis. Then you'd have this hole reflected up here. Of course, these folds can get a lot more complicated. So we'll get more in depth on how to track holes across different types of folds with more complicated examples in our next video. But for now, let's go through the basic approach to solving hole punching problems. When you're looking at a problem like this, you wanna make sure you understand how it's folding. Here we can see that the paper is folded down, then there's a diagonal fold, then there's a vertical fold here. After this, you wanna track the unfolding steps backwards visualizing how it would unfold and where each of the holes would end up. Now, at this point, you have two options. One option for tracking holes is to draw yourself the hole punching grid on the scratch paper or marker board that's provided for you on your test. You can just draw it up quickly. I usually draw the holes first and then just put a box around them. You'll then wanna mark the initial hole right away and then you can fill in the other holes as you go to keep track of them. If you'd rather not do this, your other option is that you can just track the holes in your head as you work backwards through the problem. We're gonna show both for you here, but try drawing the grid and then try visualizing and see which works best for you. So in this problem, we have our initial hole here. On our first step, this hole will be reflected here. And then on this step, this hole would be reflected across this diagonal axis, resulting in this new hole here. And then in our final step, we would have this hole unfolding across here to reveal another hole. And we'd end up with a full pattern that we can see matches choice A. And it's that simple. Let's try a harder one to make sure we got it. This problem right off the bat looks really wacky, 
But again, we just wanna break it down step by step. So first, make sure you understand how everything folds. We can see that we have a diagonal fold, then what must be a vertical fold to get from here to here. And then we have another diagonal fold here where this just continues to fold around. So here's our grid and let's track our holes backwards to see where they end up. We have our initial hole on the right here. Then in this first unfolding step, that hole gets reflected diagonally. And then in the next step, only this top hole gets reflected across here. And for this final step, everything gets reflected across this full diagonal fold. Note that the whole pattern is going to be mirrored across the fold. And this looks like it matches choice E. Now here, we could use that trick that could be really helpful for problems like this. Primarily if you're struggling to track the holes or even if you just wanna double check your process. You can really quickly consider the number of layers of paper in each area and figure out how many layers the hole goes through. Here we saw our paper fold in half to create two layers. Then we saw this part folding over and doubling the layers in this area. Then this fold increases the number of layers even more for a total of six. So we know that this hole goes through six layers of paper and therefore it should make six holes in the end. And it just so happens that choice E is the only answer given that has six holes. Again, I wouldn't recommend this being your only strategy in hole punching problems, but if you're stuck or wanna double check, it can be really handy. So since we were already pretty sure E matched our pattern and it's corroborated by the layers of paper and thereby the number of holes we'll end up with, E is our answer. Here's a summary of the rules of hole punching problems and how to approach them on your DAT exam. Hole punching problems show you a sequence of paper folding steps followed by at least one hole punch. There may also be more than one hole punch in the last step. Or half holes created by holes being punched on a paper fold crease. To solve hole punching problems, you have to determine where all the holes will end up after the paper is unfolded. Note that this dotted line allows you to keep track of the original position of the unfolded sheet of paper. The paper always remains inside this area. Folds can be horizontal, diagonal, or vertical. The paper may keep folding in the same direction or can fold back on itself. It can fold back beyond layers that are underneath and the top layers can even separate from layers underneath and be peeled back during a fold. Holes are duplicated when they're unfolded because they go through multiple layers of paper. Holes are always duplicated across the axis of a fold in the paper, such that the duplicated hole or holes are symmetrical and equidistant from the axis of the fold. And holes always end up somewhere on this grid. So make sure to study the grid and know which holes are symmetrical to others within this grid. When you approach a hole punching problem, make sure to first understand how the paper is folded. To answer the problem, track each unfolding step backwards, taking note of where any holes end up. You can do this in your head, or you may find it useful to use your scratch paper to draw the hole punching grid for yourself and keep track of your holes there. The best way to master hole punching problems is of course, practice. Fortunately, if you're struggling with these problems, starting with our level one question bank before you do harder question banks gives you an easy way of learning how to track holes without getting overwhelmed. So good luck studying.